Greetings world, I'm uh, Rene Capone. I'm at my art studio and I have the distinct honor to be interviewing Miss Selena Angel. She has a very unique, beautiful name. Would you honor us? Yes, my name is Selena Angel Alessandra Valentini, which beautiful. is very long and Rene has a hard time for not <laughs> 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 to My mind shuts up. <laughs> Fish in a bowl. Okay, so you're a figure artist, I'm a figure artist. and that's. Yeah partially why I invited you here. I kind of want to understand more about your process and how you use the figure and why. Well, my love for human form and humans and humanity in general have brought me to always paint figures in the center of my paintings. And not too long ago, I was painting this, let's say, fifth dimensional cosmic paintings that slowly turned into a more erotic and erotic because eroticism is, is part of life and to divide it from what is normal and what is erotic is kind of really creating a lot of per mind split and perversion Division, in our society right? and yes so yeah so I decided to actually paint it and uh, not everybody likes it when I talk about my art people kind of cringe but some is very erotic, some oh, is less. This is one of the, let's say, very cringing piece. It's for some, called. For some. <laughs> it's called "Enlight the Beast, Don't Repress It." You know, someone once told me once, if you don't like something, you should examine it further, try to understand why, and overcome it, no matter what the piece is. Yeah, I always use the same model. She's one of my models, and you will see the same woman in all my paintings. But the way I paint it, it's always. Uh, it looks like a woman, and um, she's kind of an icon. I definitely and feel the sense of another dimension. Yeah. There's a portal here of some sort. Yeah, there is a portal, in fact. This, uh, exactly when you do have um, an intercourse, for example, it, you open a portal. The same, the same fact that we, or when we have an orgasm, this is actually a portal into the force of the universe, the same force that created life. And yeah, this is my signature, which is a very beautiful ancient symbol. It's called the tetragram, and it's a symbol that was, well, it's this six-point star, and it's also made this way by Master Crowley, which is a very good your friend of us <laughs> <laughs> in another dimension. Yeah. yeah, he spends time with him a lot <laughs> lately, yeah. and. Uh, I love this piece. I love the yeah. expression of the face. I love that you can sense that there's time, distance, and space, and that it's coming from somewhere else, not yeah. here. And, and this is not coming from a darkness. Like you might see the background like a devilish background, yeah. but it's not. It's just the passion. There's a touch yeah. of the Medusa, but in a yes. really lovely way. Yeah, I, mean, I, I did it on purpose. So the the background is always the first part. I create a lot of texture. I like to create really three dimensional texture. And I like to put lots of things that, you know, create like a thing. This is not just a flat piece of art. It becomes almost like a sculpture. So I love that. And the fact that you can actually see it as an object, not just a flat painting. So you so did move on from there, though. You, know, you don't just do astral plane projection. No. You go other places. So I'm kind of curious about the more playful side of it. If you think you can identify the playful stuff, well, I'm, you I know, maybe playful. I've been doing, I, I've been doing a lot more um, live art. So I do, there's, for example, this is same model, but I did a live sketch of her. Nothing like a whole painting. This is just a quick sketch. And you, do, you do workshops, don't you? Yeah, I do the, uh, my workshop are called Orgasmica, and it's also erotic art, but it's live erotic art. Basically, I hire models that are willing to, to perform erotic art in front of uh, students, and the students uh, draw the erotic art, which is not really happening in real life. I mean, it's there happening, but it's pretending erotic I've posts. been to her class, it's very casual. <laughs> it's very casual, yeah. Nothing like, oh my god, we're gonna see a porno movie. No, <laughs> nothing like that. It's also the same model, and uh, I took this from a picture that I made of her, and uh, then I sketched it, and then I made a painting. It's called the Madonna Whore. The Madonna Whore is a symbol of what women had to go through for centuries, basically being identified as whore when they, in Oh, especially in the Catholic tradition and many traditions, Catholic, 
you, you know, you know, uh, many. Absolutely. You know, you're really getting rid of duality. That's what I. Yes. Mean. So I basically, like she has the enlightenment aura yeah. around her two well, bumps: I mean, the bump, the head, and the butt. Why? Because sexuality is a very enlightening act, and being sexually aroused is a very enlightening act that women especially can go through and do go through. And being identified as a whore, the Madonna whore, it's been a, it's actually what we've been uh, fighting and going through for pretty much thousands Forever. of years. Yeah, <laughs> and in every religion that has been an identification with whore energy if a woman is too sexually aroused or too sexually like powerful so in this case she is empowered empowered yeah and demanding of energy and respect her, you know and yes now and speaking of respect if you don't mind me asking yes how do you feel about the state of the world <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that question so <laughs> Now, right now, we have a lot of division going on because we're trying to get kind of, you know, humanity is going through a big awakening and this awakening is definitely pushing us forward with our, but there's big forces that are pulling us down and uh, especially the establishment. As we know right now, it's a big force that's trying to pull us back into what we've been fighting darkness. for many years, yeah, the darkness, that that blame and shame, that that's another very big much, thing, the blame and shame, so. you said that. yeah, that has been predominant like until maybe 50, 40, 30 years ago, not even, and we had to fight it with a lot of the things that we now are trying you know, to, yes, go ahead. I think you actually brought a little shame to somebody who might deserve it. Yes, I did. I, I think it's. I, let's go see it. I, yes, I'm excited let's go about it. it. I don't. Yes. Not my favorite person on earth. No, it's not. Not mine. <laughs> but during the election, I had the honor to do a drawing of a friend of mine that had a body shape that remind me for a second of somebody that you might recognize as our current president. <laughs> <laughs> And this current president that you see here has been portrayed by me. I mean, the portrait is real. This friend of mine was actually really doing this while I was portraying him. And then uh, it happened to become him. Why I made it him? Because it looked like him and he was perfect. So this is the president jerking off with America. Yay! Yes. Feel good yet? I love it. It's a really chilling portrait of him. And, yeah. Uh, I yeah. remember when you made it, uh, the whole world was kind of going insane, and I was so happy to see it because it's somebody I know finally had responded to a situation that needed to be addressed. And yeah. She did it first. <laughs> <laughs> thank and I you. thought it was spectacular. So, so I want to thank you for coming. Thank you, Renee. Um You're extremely beautiful and extremely talented, and beauty really does have a brain. Oh yeah, we have the life proof in many women in this world that beauty is not just a piece of us. <laughs> it's a so piece much. of us, of all of us. <laughs> thank you, Renee. Um, thank Hi, you for everybody. joining us, and um, we'll be back, and so will she. Thank you. Mwah.